Our next video for IB is going to look at prokaryotic cells, uh, and this is IB 2.2. What you are required to know for IB for prokaryotic cells is pretty straightforward and pretty basic, so, so this should be a pretty quick video um, as there's not a whole lot of, of uh, specific content that IB requires you to know. Um, a couple of the beginning characteristics of prokaryotic cells. If you remember back to uh, advanced or general biology, prokaryotic cells are usually a little bit more basic than eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells obviously being plant or animal cells, and we'll take a look at those in our next lesson. But prokaryotic cells, um, within them, the DNA is not in a nucleus. It's not enclosed in a specific membrane-bound region, and so uh, it's just kind of floating out in the cytoplasm, and we'll see what that looks like. It doesn't have a true nucleus or membrane-bound organelles, so it's much more simpler in that aspect. And uh, as I said, it's simpler in structure than a eukaryotic cell. Some good examples include bacteria, and RKI, um, those are both uh, good examples of prokaryotic cells. Let's look at some of the specific characteristics, uh, features of prokaryotic cells. Here's a nice image that shows us quite a few of the different, um, uh, different components of a prokaryotic cell. And the first of those that we're going to look at is the cell wall. Prokaryotes actually do have a cell wall. This is one of the few things that they share in common with eukaryotes, uh, specifically only plant cells. The cell wall helps to provide some protection and support for the cell. Um, it's kind of a rigid out, uh, outer structure. And the second thing that it has is a plasma membrane. And this is one of the things back, if you remember, to the cell theory that all cells have in common is that they have a plasma membrane. The third thing is this nucleoid here. And in our next slide, we'll actually look at the description of this. But this is basically where the DNA is concentrated, or it's in a... Uh, kind of a floating mass together within the cell. It's not within a specific membrane-bound region, but it's all concentrated in one area. Another thing that prokaryotes have is a flagella. And we'll actually be able to see some cells uh, under the microscope throughout the year that have flagella. And you can actually see the tail moving. And that's really helping to provide the cell a, a means of locomotion and movement. Um, there's also cilia, which are uh, little hair-like projections. Um, that also help provide movement or to, to provide a flow of food towards the cell in some individual in some characteristics. Uh, but flagella is the primary one for uh, prokaryotic cells. The cytoplasm is uh, a characteristic that all cells have. Uh, it's uh, primarily um, used for the storage of organelles or or different components of, of the cell. Um, a lot of chemical reactions take place there, so that is one that prokaryotes have as well. Uh, another feature that all cells have are ribosomes. Um, ribosomes are where proteins are produced, and so we can see some free-floating ribosomes here uh, throughout the cell. And the last one is called a pili, and these are these short kind of hair-like projections uh, on the external portion of the cell. They are. This is not cilia. Uh, there's a difference between the two, and we'll look at those in just a second. So let's look at some of these structures a little bit more closely and more specifically. Uh, cell wall, it's a rigid structure outside the plasma membrane. helps to give uh, the cell support and structure and uh, also controls a little bit what goes in and out of the cell. Plasma membrane, as we've previously dis discussed, controls what enters and exits the, exits the cell. The nucleoid is a condensed area of DNA within the cell. Flagella provides a means of movement uh, in some prokaryotes. Not all prokaryotes have them, but a uh, uh, vast majority of them do. Uh, cytoplasm is the interior of the cell, contains organelles and DNA. Uh, it's also a location where chemical reactions within the cell can take place. Ribosomes produce uh, proteins. It's where proteins are produced. And lastly, pili are hair-like structures on the outside of the cells, and they're used for attachment. So, Prokaryotes are going to interact with one another often, um, and one of the ways that they can attach to one another is through these pili on the outside of the cell. Uh, IB requires you to know that prokaryotes divide by binary fission, and basically what this um, entails is that we have a single cell, and it's actually going to divide and split into two different cells. Um, so as you would expect, the DNA uh, is a single copy. It's coming from a single original source, and so our two uh, resulting cells are going to have the exact same DNA. So in this image we can see here's our original DNA, uh, here's our original cell, here's some ribosomes, some pl plasmin. 
the blue is a copy of our original DNA. So here's our original DNA, copy DNA. As the cell uh, begins to divide, we end up with two cells eventually that have uh, their own strands of DNA, but they're exact copies of each other. Uh, you are not required necessarily to know the steps of binary fission, but you do need to know that prokaryotes divide by binary fission. And so these are quickly the steps that this process goes through. The DNA is coiled before reproduction. Um, it replicates, it's pulled to opposite sides of the pole. It grows in preparation for the vision. The cell wall begins to divide, which causes the cell to divide. And then we end up with two cells, daughter cells that have coiled DNA, rhizomes, and plasmids. And again, this DNA is an exact copy of um, the original. So both cells end with the exact same type of DNA. Uh, you could call this a type of asexual reproduction because there's no mixing of the DNA. Um, there's no gametes produced. Uh, advantages of this is that you don't have to find a partner or a mate in order to reproduce, but again, it's not introducing any, um, it's not introducing any different diversity in terms of the gene pool. And we'll look at this a little bit more second semester when we start talking about evolution and natural selection and the difference between asexual and sexual reproduction. That's it for prokaryotes. Pretty short. Uh, in class, we will take a look at more specifically identifying um, E. coli under the microscope and drawing some of these structures that we've seen in this video uh, based off of our observations.